you're one of the world's richest people. Um, your company is one of the world's richest companies. He is, without question, one of the greatest business leaders, investors, philanthropists of all time, the Warren Buffett. If we want to change the world, we change ourselves. Change ourselves is more important and easier. You're your own biggest asset by far. I mean, you've got, you've got all kinds of potential. Most people go through life using up a very, very small part of their potential. And so anything you do that invests in yourself, uh, is, that's the best investment you can possibly make. To transform what you see on the outside, you've got to transform who you are on the inside. Just like a human growth, you can never, this body can never grow, 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 grow. Certain times, the slow of growth of the body is slow, but you should grow your mind, grow your culture, grow your value, grow your wisdom. You control your destiny. You can create what you want to create. You have gifts that nobody else on the planet has. You have talent. You have everything. Everything you need to become whatever you want is right here. Believe what you're doing, love it, whether people like it, don't like it, be simple. And like the word, life is like a box of chocolate. You never know what you can get, right? I never know I would be here talking to you, and talking to Charlie Rose. I never know. I just made one choice when I was 16 years old that I was no longer going to be a victim, and that I was going to be a hero to myself, and that I was going to change my life. And I had no idea that it would lead me here. And no idea I'd be here in the set talking to you, doing what we're doing. No idea. It was never part of the plan. The only thing I knew is I didn't want to be the victim and this other trajectory of life. I wanted something different. So I made that choice. The choices you make today, tomorrow, they might affect you for the next year, five years, ten years, or for the rest of your life. A lot of young people lose hope, lose vision, and start to complain. What does being a victim get you? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. So if you're getting nothing from one direction, why not turn around and go to the other direction? Path of victimization is nothing. Path of hero, you might as well give it a shot, and all the different cool things that happen along the way are just amazing. There's never a lack of opportunity. Never. If, if you don't think there's an opportunity there, you haven't found it. And so it's not, it's not the opportunities, it's you. Remember, the mind controls a body. The body does not control the mind. What makes these guys special and successful in everything they do is not their physical gifts, it's their mental toughness. Things are just happening, and it's because of one choice. And that's it. So if you're listening to this and you're thinking you've made all these different choices and your life is in one direction, make one different choice. Just one. And see where it goes. The most important thing is that you have a vision. That you have a goal. Because without that vision and without that goal, again, you're drifting around and you're never going to end up anywhere. People don't become successful just by accident. I would follow my passion. I mean, whatever turns you on. You know, I... Uh, uh, I found, I was lucky, I found something early that, that turned me on. Uh, you don't want to take a job just for the money. You don't want to take a job for an organization that you really don't feel good about or work for people that you don't feel good about. You, you really want to be excited when you get out of bed every morning. Follow your passion. Do something you're very passionate about. And don't try to chase what is kind of the hot passion of the day. You gotta know what you're good at, you gotta know what you're marginal at, and you gotta know what you suck at. And you've gotta find people who complement your skills. You know, and you gotta know what type of thinker you are, what, you gotta know how you work, you know. And once you start to understand who you are, then you can start finding places where you'll be successful and you won't be, you won't be lying to yourself. You can have any habit you want to be. You can be, you can be lazy. You can be prompt. You can be, you can be late. You can be honest. You can cut corners. I mean, you have all these choices, and those are choices for you to make. Nobody else is going to make them for you. 
And I would suggest that you play this little game with me too. Uh, think about the person you would most like to be in life. So maybe it's one of your contemporaries, maybe it's somebody a little older, but pick out the person you admire the most, the person that you'd change places with if you could. And then write down why you admire them. Just put it on a piece of paper. And then figure out the person that you would least like to change places with you, who really turns you off, who you find repulsive. And list the reasons why that person turns you off so much. And then look at that list. And you'll find that everything on the left-hand side, what you admire in other people, the qualities they bring to life, you'll find those are things you can do yourself. It's very simple. You gotta apply yourself, but the habits you form in doing that early on will carry you through life. If you do that, two or three years from now, if you go through the same exercise, you'll find out that the person you admire the most is yourself. Baby steps count too as long as you're going forward. And one day you add all those baby steps up and you might be surprised at where you can get to. So you got to really have a specific order to me to have that vision that I want to be Mr. Universe, that I want to be the greatest bodybuilder of all time. That was a great vision and that specifically to look like Reg Park and to be up there on that stage and to lift the trophy overhead and to win the championship over and over and over again. So that was a great goal. I put pictures of Reg Park and of Sonny Liston, of boxers and of Ali and of powerlifters and weightlifters all over my bedroom, uh, you know, uh, wall. So that every day when I go to sleep, every day when I wake up, I look at those pictures and they motivate me. You need that motivation and then therefore you have this kind of imprint in front of you all the time and you know exactly what you're chasing. The people you look up to are going to form your vision of what the world, you know, how you want to be in later life. This is why I always smiled when I was in the gym. People always came up to me and said, why are you smiling? You're working out five hours a day. You're doing the same as the other guys, but the other guys have a sour face. They're pissed off that they have to do another rep or another set or something. I looked forward to. I looked forward to another thousand set, uh, reps of, of sit-ups. I looked forward to another 500 pounds of, of, of uh, leg press or squat. I looked forward to doing more and more curls until my arms fall off. Why? Because I knew that every rep that I did and every set that I did and more weights that I lifted, I get one step closer to turning that vision into reality. You have to act on your passion. You have to act on your inner drive. Don't let those feelings stay inside of you. You got to know what to do with them. You got to know how to make them work in order to get what you want. Don't keep it inside. Most of you are not doing what you want to do with your life because you're worried about somebody else's opinion. Don't let anybody steer you away from where you want to be in life. Not your parents, not your teachers, not your guidance counselors. If you have a passion and you feel confident that you can do it, go after it. The hell with everybody else. This is your life. You have the tools and resources. When you wake up every day, you know that you're blessed you've been given an opportunity that most people in life have not. You have the ability to live your dreams. Decide, commit, act, succeed, repeat. Good, great, unstoppable. Every team, every work atmosphere, no matter what you do, must consist of those three personalities. If you have those three personalities and you can identify the individuals that have those three personalities, you're guaranteed success in whatever you do. All the big famous people that you hear about, you know, Richard Branson and Steve Jobs and, and, and Zuckerberg and everyone, they're no different than you are. 70 something percent of the world's billionaires are self-made. So, you can achieve this. Now, it's not going to be easy. You don't just wake up on Tuesday and become rich on Wednesday. But it doesn't take any more effort than going to a job that you hate. All you have to do is think 
believe in your heart and you'll achieve. It's not true. There's a lot of people who think wonderful, great thoughts. They believe that I deserve this and I can have this. But they don't do one thing and this is what causes their problem. They don't take consistent action every day. Most people aren't willing to commit to switching from what's comfortable to what's not long enough for the new to be comfortable. I've been asked hundreds of times, why are you Wes, right? Why aren't you the stereotypical, like, you're abused, you went through this, your dad's an alcoholic, your mom's this, you're like, why aren't you in that pool? I made a choice. That's it. I made a choice. I made a choice that I didn't want to be that. There's nothing special about me. Things are just happening, and it's because of one choice. And that's it. So if you're listening to this and you're thinking you've made all these different choices and your life is in one direction, make one different choice. Just one. And see where it goes. Anything that we want to achieve starts here first. Then we can get our bodies to move into action to create it. I believe our lives are controlled by one force, decisions. I certainly believe in force greater than myself, call it God if you will, grace, whatever you want to call it, the universe. But I also believe it gives us choices. And the decisions we make control us much more than the conditions we meet. It's not the conditions, it's your decisions. It's not the security that's robbing ambition, it's the illusion of security that robs ambition. So the biggest risk you can take in life it's not taking one. If you're at that point where you're in the middle of your career and you lost your job, or you're just out of college and starting, or just out of high school, go talk to a senior citizen about what they really regret about their lives. And it's not what they failed at. It's what they didn't try. It's the regrets of why didn't I? You cannot let the fear of the opinion of others influence your decisions. Most people had not honoured even half of their dreams at that stage and they had to die knowing that it was due to choices they had made or not made or due to fear of the opinion of others that they had done so. It is your life. Nobody else can tell you what's best for you and only you will have to deal with the consequences. So make your own decisions. In order to be successful at anything, it has to be what you truly love. Because if you don't love it and you ain't willing to die for it, don't do it, right? Sometimes you have to do these transitional jobs to get to where you have to go to. But it's okay. If you got to sell bed sheets, sell these bed sheets. Do what you have to do. Do it with pride. But at the same time, do not let any job that you do kill your dream. Because the only thing that can make you feel alive is your dream. Don't let anybody steer you away from where you want to be in life. Not your parents, not your teachers, not your guidance counselors. If you have a passion and you feel confident that you can do it, go after it. The hell with everybody else. This is your life. You have the tools and resources. When you wake up every day, you know that you're blessed. And you've been given an opportunity that most people in life have not. You have the ability to live your dreams. If money was no object, if you could wake up and do what you wanted to do, what would you do today? If it didn't matter what majors made the most money, if you didn't have to worry about the pile of bills sitting on your dorm room desk, if you didn't have to worry about the opinions of your friends or your parents, what would you be doing today? You see, if you don't have a passion for what you do, What's the purpose of waking up? If you wait on your alarm clocks to wake you up every day, what's the purpose? Would you get up?
Every day you should have a purpose and you should feel it with your passion. A lot of you are probably facing a similar decision. Where do you go from here? Graduate college? What's the next step, right? I'm sure you have certain opportunities, most, most opportunities that a lot of people don't have. But what direction do you go in? The choices you make today, tomorrow, they might affect you for the next year, five years, 10 years, or for the rest of your life. There's one exception to this rule. You have to love what you do. You have to have a passion for anything that is a nine or above. Because the time that's required to make that effectively and efficiently, to make the amount of revenue that's gonna keep you content, may be the next 10, 15, 20, 30 years of your life. So if you're not willing to give 30 years to become a doctor, then don't do it. Because if you don't have a passion for it, you're gonna wake up one day and find out that you're just working a job. It does not matter where you come from. I have seen people come out of the desert, walk across the desert, being born in the most dire of circumstances. Doesn't matter what your mama did, whether she did or had a PhD or no D, what matters is now, this moment, and your willingness to see this moment for what it is, accept it, forgive the past, take responsibility, and move forward. And if you're sitting around waiting, on somebody to save you, to fix you, to even help you, you are wasting your time because only you have the power to take responsibility to move your life forward. And the sooner you get that, the sooner your life gets into gear. Then you'll really be living a limitless life. You'll be able to do the things that are important. And as Elon Musk said, if something is important enough, you should try, even if the probable outcome is failure. And that's where most people stop. And this is the one that drives me crazy. And this is the thing about really trying to do something with your life. Yes, you might fail. Yes, you might embarrass yourself. You might end up doing a face plant. You might end up wishing that you hadn't even started. But if it's important enough, even in that moment, You've got to get back up and ask yourself, honestly, where did I fail? What was the skill that I didn't have that was required of this task? And once you stop beating yourself up, once you stop turning inward with a judgment of I'm not good enough, and you start turning inward with the judgment of I don't have good enough skills yet, then you can do something because you know it's only a matter of time, effort, and focus between who you are today and who you need to become to actually do that thing. So don't worry about whether or not you're gonna fail because the only promise that I can make you is that you will fail. And as long as the only promise that you're willing to make yourself is that you won't stop, ultimately you will get to the top of the mountain. In order to build a business, in order to be the best parent, the best spouse, to do all those things that you know you want to do with your life, with your work, with your dreams, you're going to have to do things that are difficult, uncertain, or scary. See, Nelson Mandela did it. He just did it not knowing if it were right. Mahatma Gandhi just did it not knowing if it were right. Mother Teresa just did it not looking for affirmation or confirmation, is this right? Martin Luther King did it, not even knowing if it would happen before his life ended. I mean, what are you waiting on? Are you willing to do it afraid? Are you willing to do it knowing that you got so much work to do to get it better, to get it more perfect, but are you willing to do it inside your imperfection? Do you realize that in your imperfection, you're perfect for the job? Without commitment, you'll never start. But more importantly, without consistency, You'll never finish. You're just kind of waiting. You're waiting to get everything in order. You're waiting. You're waiting so that everything is, is in you, it's together. You're waiting to not be afraid. You're waiting to have the courage. You're waiting to have all the money. You're waiting to lose weight. How, how about I not, how about you not wait to get it right? You look at, you figure out how does it look doing it wrong? You gotta be willing 
to do it afraid. See, you might be waiting for the fear to stop. I'm afraid, what do I do? Do it anyway. I'm afraid I don't quite know if I should move. Move anyway. I don't know if I should leap. Leap afraid. And then gather your courage on the way down. 